No, I don't waste no time How you doing guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is Joshua Daniel George a social media marketing online coach and uh, two of my best performing videos are regarding uh, cold loom outreach and uh, like I said you know the videos that are on my channel now I've gotten thousands upon thousands of views I'm getting a lot of comments and questions about uh, loom outreach as well you know do you send anything before that what do you say in the loom etc um, do you still say the same things that you said you know in the videos so for those that haven't watched those videos I basically just went live showed you guys or live what I would say uh, when sending the loom videos and like I said the questions that I still get are you know is that still applicable uh, because these videos are almost a year old now you know do I still say the same things is it still relevant um, are there any changes now because loom has obviously you know gone through this complete new update where you can only send five minute looms and so on and so forth you know what has actually changed so in this video i am basically going to give you guys my 2021 loom outreach strategy now before we begin yes you know this is going to be a relatively long video when i say relatively it's going to be a video around the 10 minute mark so if you haven't got the patience to wait 10 minutes or 50 minutes however long it is then just go back to watching TikTok videos or whatever you were doing, cat videos on the internet. You know, there's a bunch of cat videos on YouTube. Go and watch that because this video is not for you. Now, for those of you that are actually willing to stick around and hear what my strategy is for 2021 with Loom Outreach, here it goes without beating around the bush too much. What I did previously, or what I almost created the impression of doing previously because... Um, I didn't really do cold loom outreach for a very, very long time. You know, cold loom outreach was something that I tried in, you know, at the start of it all. Then I realized, okay, you know, some of these looms aren't getting seen. Some of these looms aren't getting any replies, etc. So what I then quickly did was I started sending emails before sending the loom. So I'm a big proponent of cold email outreach. You know, I do think it works. Yes, the conversion rate of a cold email um, in terms of like open rate and response rate is relatively low. But the great thing about it is you can front load that email outreach cannon, right? Whereas if you send a message on Facebook, I think you can only send like eight to 10 messages cold uh, within like a certain period of time. I think it's like half an hour or an hour on Facebook. They will take you down and say you can't copy or paste this message any longer. You can get issues with your account. Some have even got their account bans, etc. Same goes for, you know, called Instagram DM outreach, you know, some of them won't get read. Um, if you are not, if that person is not following you or has accepted your, you know, sort of like message on outreach, then they will, you know, all the messages will just end up in this like request box um, and, you know, they will probably never watch that or look at that. So your message that you sent is not getting seen. And if you've sent the cold email within that message, then again, you know, it's not getting seen. So what I um, do now, what I've been doing, what I highly recommend you guys do as well, is cold email outreach with the call to action to send the video. So the video or the email could be something like, hey, um, you know, I was doing some research for a client, came across your website, uh, had a look at your socials, I've got some ideas for you, is it okay to send a quick video? Now that is, like I said, that is very broad, it's very, there's not more, it's very bland, right? There's not much flavor to it. Um, so obviously tailor this specifically to your, you know, niche or industry. And that is another thing that I do want to give you guys. When you are sending these emails, yes, it's easy to go bland and it's easy to send like 300 emails a day, um, just generically to e-com stores, but go a bit more specific and you'll notice that the response rates will increase drastically because you can tailor that email much more towards that niche or industry. So I'm all for, you know, front loading that cannon, you know, sending out as many emails as possible. And then when they respond, send the email with the, the Loom video. But in that email, try and go specific. So just send it to, for example, all the supplement companies in the US e-com stores, um, all the, I don't know, gadget uh, e-com stores in the US or UK or whatever, and then tailor the email to that. So, hey, um, you know, we've, we've gotten great results for gadget stores or everything like that. I saw your gadget store 
um, on Shopify or when doing research, got some ideas for you, it's okay if I send a quick video. So that is what you say in the first email. Keep it generic and another quick tip, something that I have noticed from experience, some of you might get better results if you do it differently, but what I've noticed from experience, and believe me, I've sent out, I've sent out a lot of cold emails, is I don't mention the agency in any way, shape or form in that first email. So they don't know if I'm some kind of you know freelancer, they don't know what the angle is really. But what I've noticed is that yes, they are less um, they you know the the they're less aware of what's going on, but the response rate is higher. So the first email that I send, I just say with kind regards, Josh, and that is it. I don't mention the agency, I don't mention the business, I don't send the website, nothing like that. Um, and I definitely don't say, oh, I help, um, I help businesses grow their business with Facebook ads as this agency, not like that. I just focus on them, say, hey, got some ideas for you. Is it okay if I send a quick video with kind regards, Josh? And I notice that the response rate is much, much higher. With that said, of course, subject line needs to be customized as well. Don't just have like a random um, subject line, you know, make sure that, that that subject line is a little bit tailored towards the niche and industry. And of course, if you can go specific by, you know, adding their first name, adding the company name, or anything in the subject line, that'll obviously increase the open rates as well. Okay, so cold email, asking if it's okay to send a video, then we send the Loom video. Now, what do we actually say in the Loom video? In the previous videos, I basically went onto the website, I saw if the pixel was installed, yes or no, I checked if they were running ads, yes or no, and then basically gave a comment on that um, and asked them if it was okay, uh, or if you know, they wanna know more, then you know, if they wanna hop on a quick call. The same strategy sort of um, applies here in 2021. What I do now is, to be fair, I only focus on clients that are running ads anyway. Um, so we're sort of, um, what we're doing now with the agency going forward is we're no longer focusing on startups, people that are not running ads, anything like that. We wanna help winners win more. So we're focusing on people that are already running ads and we help them get to that next level because they've done, already done all that testing. They know their products are tested. They know, you know what works and what doesn't. All we then do is come in and just explode their business from there. So help winners win more is the motto uh, with our agency. And then from there, like I said, rather than saying, oh, I see that you've got the pixel installed, you know, that is good, let me check the ads. I basically just comments on the like sort of entire flow with the business. So we check their Shopify store. Again, that is something that we only focus on. We only focus on Shopify stores going forward. Check, okay, or is everything getting tracked, right? So if I add a cart, does the add a cart button fire? Um, if I initiate checkouts, do I get an extant 10 pop up, anything along those lines? Do I get an email if I abandon cart and so on and so forth? So yeah, a little bit more preparation on the front end because like I said, you need to abandon the cart and see what happens, but it does go a long way and it does provide a bit more value than just saying, oh, you know, you've got the pixel installed, that's good. Um, this is what you can do with the pixel. Sometimes, yes, you know, it'll be an existing store that are, that are going ham on Google ads, but they haven't got the pixel installed because they don't use Facebook ads different situation, then yeah, you can still say, um, oh, I've seen that you've got the, you haven't got the pixel installed, you're using Google primarily, Facebook is better because X, Y, and Z, right? So that is what you start with, a bit of value up front. You say, okay, you know, this is what I've noticed, this is what I would do in your situation. Then what I do is I compare it with a competitor. Again, it will require a bit more research on the front end, but you know, if let's say you send out 100 emails and you get five or six responses. Some of you may even get 10 responses with, you know, like I said, a 10% response rate, which um, it used to be higher, but now of course, you know, everyone as an agency owner, everyone is uh, doing cold email outreach, etc. cetera. Um, so the response rate is a bit low, but still 10% response rate is doable if you do the outreach properly, you send the emails properly, your subject line is correct, and you've enticed the business owner enough to, to respond basically. Um, so like I said, if you're getting five to six responses or 10 responses, you can easily smash out 10 looms in a day. It's not that hard. Yes, it does take a bit of time, but it is an income producing activity. So I highly recommend you just focus on it and do it properly. So like I said, compare it with a competitor. Value first and then say, listen, the reason why I'm saying all this is because this company, this business is doing this. And you know, that is why you're leaving money on the table. You can maybe compare the tracking, maybe show them an email that the competitor gets and the email that you got from them to say which one is more enticing. Um, you know, if you know, in the situation that they haven't got the pixel installed, you can say, well, these guys have got the pixel installed on Facebook. And you know, that is why if 
I abandon cart, they can retarget me on Facebook, which I am constantly on, you know, I'm constantly on social media, etc. I'm gonna get retargeted. I'm in this fire, this web, they've caught me, you know, they've got all my data, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so value up front, then compare it with the competitor. And then thirdly, before we wrap up the Loom video, we also briefly show them a case study. Now that can be the portfolio, that can be a specific case study if we've already got a business similar to that business. So let's say, for example, we um, are targeting a supplement company and we've already got great results for another supplement company, then we just say, well, listen, you know, this is what we've been doing for a, a you know, someone, another company, another supplement company, um, I wouldn't say in the area, maybe just say, uh, let's say, for example, you're working with a supplement company in the US and you were targeting a supplement company in the UK, just say, listen, you know, this is a supplement company that we're working with in the US, which we're getting, um, you know, very good results for. This is what we've done so far. Okay. And what I've also mentioned in my videos a few times, if you haven't got the results to show, if you haven't got the screenshots, then just show them a relatively generic case study of what is possible. So you can say, well, listen, you know, this is a blog post that we've published on Facebook, you know, whatever you want. If you've got your own website, you can do that. Um, and just say, you know, this is what is possible nowadays. This is what we can do as well. So if you find this interesting in any way, shape or form, um, then what we can do is we can hop on a quick, uh, call to see if we're the right fit for each other to see you know if there's something else that we can do for you because I do have some more ideas for you if not no hard feelings at all just let me know and I'll leave you guys alone but I just thought I'd reach out to see you know if there's anything I can do to help you guys with and that's basically how I end the loom okay so when we send the loom video cold email only to those that respond we send the loom video then in the loom video a little bit of value no longer the generic oh you've got the pixel installed etc compare it with a competitor, show them that they're basically leaving money on the table because this competitor is getting in front of their target audience, show them a case study or portfolio material that will entice them to, you know, basically it's, it's a subtle flex, right, as well. It positions you as the authority and it also shows them what is possible because that is another thing. Um, you know, there's so many agencies out there or, you know, aspiring agencies is probably a better word um, and not everyone's got portfolio material, right? So not everyone has got results. So if you've got any kind of results in any way, shape or form, show it because you can separate yourself from the rest by, uh, you know, by doing so. And even if, let's say, for example, you again, go back to the supplements, let's say you're targeting a supplement company, but you haven't got results for a supplement company, but you have got results in e-com. So you've got, you know, you've, you can show um, some kind of fashion or apparel brands. You don't need to mention that it's a fashion or a power brand. I'm not saying lie, you know, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is what you can do is you can say, listen, within the e-com industry, these are results that we've gotten for all the clients. Don't mention that it's, a, it's not very specific to the initial industry. Just say, well, this, this is what we've got for all the clients. As you can see here, cost for purchase, return on ad spend, return on investment. So that is basically what you can do um, in terms of the results. From there, like I said, what I do, what I've noticed that works for me better because Basically, it's a flow, right? You need to check the, the flow every single step of the way. So the first step is, is my cold email getting read? If not, okay, tweak the subject line. If the subject line is okay, the email's getting read, but you're not getting a response, then you know, okay, the the text of the email is not enticing enough, so that you can start tweaking that. Once you start getting people to respond to your email, then you can start working on your Loom videos. If your Loom is not getting viewed, then you know that the video or the email that you send the video in is not enticing enough. And basically what you're doing is you're working your way all the way through that flow to make sure that at the end of the day or at the end of you know your testing periods that the whole flow works. Because there's no point in sending 100 um, cold emails and not getting a response and just assuming that Loom Outreach is not for you. Because every step of the way, there is going to be a drop-off point and you just need to make sure that that drop-off point is not hitting your results. Because at the end of the day, if you send a thousand emails, you're not gonna get a thousand new clients. There is always going to be a drop-off and you just need to make sure that you're constantly tweaking that flow to make sure that the drop-off isn't that severe that you, know, you don't get any responses or any clients from it, okay? So always think to yourself, at what point are they dropping off? And then tweak the last step so that they basically go on to the next step um, of that flow. So when I've got my Loom video, I send them an email and I say to them, here's the Loom video that I mentioned, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. And the reason why I don't say, oh, book a call or do this is because I want them to get to the next step. I want them to watch that Loom video. And in the Loom video, 
at the end of it, I say, listen, if you want to know more about this, then let's uh, schedule a quick call. I will leave my link, my calendar link in the first comments of Loom. But by then, they've already watched that video. They're already indoctrinated. They've already seen the value and they are much more likely to book a call as opposed to sending an email and saying, well, here's the video, book a call here because then they know, okay, there's some kind of sales pitch at the end of it. Um, this guy just wants my money, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even going to bother watching the video because I don't want to be enticed in any way, shape or form. Okay. So again, innocent on the front end, you know, you're just saying, Hey, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And then after they've watched the video, you say, listen, if this is something that you're interested in, let's hop on a call. And then even then I still mention if it's not a right fit, if you know, we don't think, um, we're the right fit for each other, then no hard feelings will part ways. And then from there, like I said, you know, if you get them on a call, you can start going through um, basically, you know, the, the two call close. If you have not watched that video already, I uh, highly recommend you guys do. It's called the two call close on my YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you watch it. It basically shows you how you can close higher ticket clients and get better results um, with your, you know, your sales call basically. But that is how I structure the Loom video nowadays and how I'm going to structure it going forward. With that said, another few quick tips, I've actually written, uh, written them down, is uh, in the second email, so you've got the cold email I'll reach where you just say, with kind regards, Josh. In the second email where you say, hey, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, that is where you basically apply your um, company signature. Not in sales, not like that, just say, with kind regards, Josh, um, you know, company owner, Brampaneer, and then maybe the website link of Brampaneer, you know, just like that as a signature. Why do we do this? Because we do want to, from that point onwards, we want to entice them to check out our website. If you haven't got a website, do your LinkedIn, you know, or um, do Facebook or anything like that. But if you've got a website or if you're on the verge of getting a website, just quickly whip up a landing page just so we can basically track them via the pixel. So we install the Facebook pixel on our website. Okay, so the camera there just uh, died after 15 minutes. It just stopped recording for some reason. But um, so like I said, on the website, we've got the Facebook pixel. So once they go onto the website, they get tracked. Um, and what we can then do is set up either middle of the funnel campaigns, so retargets and website visitors, or bottom of the funnel campaigns, retargets and people that maybe clicked on that calendar button but didn't actually end up booking a call, or people that have booked a call but didn't end up becoming a client. Again, you know, it depends on how much data you've got, but you can create custom audiences from there. Um, and why do we do this? Because it's instant qualification for yourself as an agency, right? Like there are so many agencies out there that are offering Facebook ads as a service, offering social media marketing as a service, paid traffic as a service, but they're not running ads for themselves. Now, what does that say, you know, to the clients as an agency? You know, if you're not even running ads for yourself, why should I trust you to run ads for my business, right? So what we do is we set up retargeting campaigns to people that have visited our website, that's the easiest one to do because that's the quickest one that will generate enough data to run. Um, and then we basically say, hey, you know, we've, uh, so this can be like a quick video, right? We can just say something like, hey, um, so that you viewed our website, you know, would love to know your thoughts on uh, working together, anything along those lines, depends on, you know, who you kind of target and of course, try and tailor it towards that niche. Um, so for example, back to the supplement companies, hey, you know, um, I saw that you viewed our website, um, you know, we are very much working together with a lot of supplement companies. We're getting them great results. We'd love to know if you are a supplement company and you need help, um, you know, expanding your customer database, getting more sales. You, you'll have to figure out what the pain points are of, of supplement companies. Um, and basically the reason why you're seeing this video now is because you've been on our website and we've retargeted you via the Facebook pixel. And this is something that we can do for you and your customers. So if your customers go onto the website, they'll be retargeted by the, you know, by similar ads. And it immediately shows them that the proof is in the pudding, right? That, that you can do what, um, that you're practicing what you preach and that you're doing it for yourself as well. Uh, and that you can basically do the same for them. So if they're being retargeted by a retargeting campaign from you, that just shows them like this stuff works, right? And the same goes for if you get them on a call and they say, well, why should I trust you? And they've come through an ad. You can just say, listen, the reason why we're on the call in the first place is because, you know, you've been hit by my advertisements. So we can just do what we're doing, you know, to get you on this call for your company so that you can get your customers to buy from you. Okay. So that is basically a little quick hack um, to, you know, retarget those people and basically create a little mini spiders web for yourself. Um, with you know Facebook advertising, and you can do this from like one or two pounds a day. Of course, the more you spend, the quicker you'll get results. The more you can test, but 
there's no reason why you can't start with, like I said, you know, one or two euros or pounds a day and just retarget that small audience over and over again, or, you know, depending on what kind of objective you set for it. Um, with that said, another thing you can do, because on the front end, you've front loaded that email outreach kind of right, you've been sending cold emails, you can also upload that into Facebook and then retarget those people again. So even the people that haven't actually, um, haven't actually, you know, gone through the flow, you can start, you know, hitting them with emails as well. The only issue there is that they might not know that it's you because on the first email you just said Josh and, you know, now you're sending them uh, emails or, you know, ads via the agency. But the great thing is if they do actually book a call through that uh, advertisement, you can say, hey, well, I actually sent you an email the other day and then they put two and two together. And again, it just boosts that authority position that you've then got, okay? So what you can do in terms of paid traffic is upload the customer list that you've got, you know, whatever you've done, either you've scraped the emails, you've gotten them yourself, whatever, um, upload that into Facebook, run ads for yourself while you're doing the email outreach, retarget people, again, with a different audience that have shown interest, that have been on the website, etc. cetera. Um, and what you can even do as well, if you've got a list that is large enough of, um, companies within a specific niche or industry, you can also upload that into Facebook and run a lookalike audience off of that. So again, if you've got 100 supplement companies in, I don't know, Australia, upload that into Facebook and then create a lookalike audience off of it and just tell Facebook, okay, here's 100 supplement companies, find me more supplement companies and run ads to those people. And you know, we are doing this for ourselves. I'll leave a quick screenshot somewhere on the screen of how we're doing that. Uh, so this in conjunction with um, we've, we've got like a few little inbound funnels set up as well, profile funnels, which I have discussed in a previous video. And of course, we're still continuing with the hybrid email outreach system. So all this together, you know, it's working quite nicely and it all ties in together nicely as well because cold emails are getting retargeted, website visitors are getting retargeted. We're also creating localized audiences of people that have retargeted and so on and so forth. And that is basically my Loom outreach strategy for 2021. So hope you got some out of this. As I mentioned, it is going to be a relatively long video. So for those of you that have stuck around, that have got the patience and you know don't go for that instant gratification that are actually willing to you know hear me out, I uh, appreciate you very much for watching this video um, till this point. If you haven't done so already, please leave this video with a thumbs up because it really does help this channel grow. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you guys in the next video.